You guys ever read some lore about your favorite game but then end up being severely unsatisfied because there's not enough content? So, you then end up scrolling through Reddit, reading people's theories and leaks, finding yourself more and more unsatisfied with each question left unanswered. Can't relate, but I thought it'd be a cool video idea to train an AI to generate some lore to see just how artistic my computer can get. Out of all the games I could have chosen, I chose League of Legends. No, League of Legends isn't my favorite game. In fact, it's a trash game. Lady. I still don't win that what? But it is a game with an extensive amount of lore, and you know what that means. We're gonna scrape their entire website clean of content, feed it to an AI, and see what amazing stories we'll get. Scraping the website should be a trivial task. All you have to do is make a script to request the web page, find the text within the web page, then you clean the data, dump it into a CSV, and then process it. So first, let's look at the League of Legends lore website. It seems like each champion has two stories. One is their main story, and the URL for it is simply just their champion name. Then, they have something called a color story, which has a more unique type of URL. With this information, all I need to do is copy and paste an array of all champion names, paste it into Python, generate the URLs for the stories, and then collect all the data. Okay, so we have a little script right here to fetch the data of a web page. so let's run the script, python script.py, and... It should be in the output.txt folder. We should be able to find the story somewhere. Wait, wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. This is bad. The website is dynamically loaded in JavaScript. It's over. Okay, so with the help of the friends I have made along the way, I found a new technology called Selenium which pretty much simulates a Chrome browser and what you can do is you can wait for the element to load, fetch it as you would in JavaScript, and that bypasses the dynamic loading. So let's run this script now. That's more like it. So after waiting for a little bit, I finally have a beautiful, beautiful CSV of all of the League of Legends stories. So now we can finally train our AI. So I was training my AI and all was going good until my computer started making weird noises. I don't know if I should be excited or scared. At that point I was like, should I stop? This is getting kind of scary, but I needed to make the video no matter what. Um guys, so I hear a crackling sound now. I have no idea what this is, I'm scared. Now it sounds like my computer is gonna explode. And it probably was gonna, if the training didn't finish any faster. So, I patiently sat in front of my computer, hoping for the best. And the model eventually got trained. Okay, now that our model is properly trained, all we have to do is load it and test it. So, right now we have the prompt, Garen smash through the wall. And let's see what the program returns. This text is uh, outputted into lux.txt for some reason. Garen smashed through the wall with a shotgun in hand and leapt off the railing into the night. You guys don't know what Garen is? Garen is the sword guy from League of Legends and um, a very balanced, balanced character. Okay, so let's run it again. Garen swung his sword. Understood, as I said. I shall fight on. Garen then withdrew. Saber lost a step, as if it had just returned to his body. Afterward, Yu Ilhan jumped forward and rushed towards Chu Tian Xiong. The two lit torches to the right and left of him turned green. Chu Tian Xiong had caught onto the ground, so he swiftly changed directions and rushed towards the girl. Okay, sounds very poetic. My only complaint is they introduced like 10 different characters without explaining what each of them are, were, so yeah. Okay, this is the part everyone has been waiting for. Now, it's story time. Garen swung his sword. 
throwing the whole crowd into their hands and raining down weapons on the disorganized and frustrated Thara, who managed to withstand his attack. However, he only managed to wipe out several of the Beast Cult's forces, though they did take out more than a dozen of the Beast Spirits, leaving just a handful of survivors left. Garen swung his sword, pulling himself out of the darkness, his sword in one hand, and throwing him back to the ground. As he did so, he picked up the bottle, unable to lift it. He had fought, he thought. He had done his duty, and he had given his life to save the world. Darius struggled in life, as he and his family were poor and many of his siblings died from exposure to tobacco. He says it made him unwell. He was terrified he would die. I was scared. I would run away and that I would get scared and that I would die, he said. But I was fine. I just didn't feel right and didn't want to be in this place. That night, I thought I would die and then I went to bed crying. I went to sleep at night thinking, I don't know. Is that it? That's it. I don't know. I don't know what was happening in my head. I don't know what was going on in my head, but it wasn't that long before I woke up and I was gone for a long time. Born wealthy, Caitlin had a lot of advantages in her life, but she knew that she was a free woman. When she was just a kid, Caitlin often walked to the weasel with her friend Davy to see him play some Dungeons and Dragons with her. Davy and Caitlin would sometimes play together. I just would say, where's the poor bastard, she recalled. He always asked me, where are you? And I'd say, no, I'm here in the streets. The couple settled in Jamaica. Caitlin and Davy continued to raise a family in the small town, but the couple moved back to Jamaica with her, along with a few friends. She said, How do you feel about this? I mean, you are part of this, are you not? Caitlin recalled. She knew it would be hard to get back. Lux had to hide her magic or else they would kill her. She had been watching through the darkness for a long time and wished she could see her young daughter. Timo leaped over the tree and ran, dashing and turning to give chase. After he had already reached a point where the bridge he was standing on wasn't anywhere near the tip of the yellow sand, he stumbled and slid in a deep crouch. He knew he could reach the only place in the desert where he could stop. Heimerdinger was a genius scientist who would ultimately go on to become a controversial figure in his own right. The future Hall of Fame inductee became a guest on the 1994 MTV reality show, Shaun the Sheep and she responded with her famous character, Kim Kardashian. And that concludes story time. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. Help a kid achieve his dreams in life. Anyways, see you in the next video. Later.